Hi, everybody, from Gloucester Stadium, the Nelsonville York Buckeyes, the Trimble Tomcats, Justin McCumber on camera, Ray Spouts, Jim McCumber here on Nelsonville TV Cable's Channel 15. And it's time to kick off another season, Jim. I tell you what, you know, I talk about Friday night football all the time, but now we're kicking it off on a Saturday night. Got a great crowd out here tonight. The whole county's able to come out and watch this matchup. The uh, Tomcats and the Buckeyes always bring a good game. You know, the huge rivalry. Uh, starting out the season, looking forward to a good ball game tonight, Jimmy. This is the last day of August, and it sure feels like an August day today and this evening. Humidity, Pretty humid. Definitely humidity is thick in the air tonight. Hopefully the rains will stay away. In the series, the Buckeyes have won four of the last five of these meetings, but of course Trimble won the last one last year over at Boston Field. They won 21-14 over the Buckeyes. You know, they won four out of the last five. However, if you look over the past nine years, the Buckeyes have won five out of those nine. Tomcats are trying to square that up after the, in the past 10 years to square that five and five right here tonight. You know, there's big expectations on both sides of the ball tonight. In this all-time series, Nelsonville York has won 28, Trimble 13, and there have been two ties. Of course, the first of this game as far as TVC titles, Nelsonville York with 20 TVC titles, and that's most of any team in the Tri-Valley Conference. And Trimble with 13 TVC titles, which is the most of anybody in the hockey division. You know, that's what I was starting to say. The expectations on both sides of the ball for this game, it really doesn't matter who's the favorite team, who's not the favorite team. Both teams come into this ball game. It's the first game of the season, and they are looking to start the season out with a win and then move on to the, the TBC Hawking and or Ohio, depending on which division, and then moving on into the playoffs. Every single year, these teams come looking for state championships. It's, there's never a lower expectation than that. When you talk about the playoffs, of course, they change the State playoffs for this year. Trimble drops to the new Division 7, and the Buckeyes drop from Division 5 down to Division 6 this year. Yeah, and, you know, there's been a lot of talk about that, but the reality is that there wasn't a lot of changes because most of the teams followed each other in the divisional change. The majority of the changes came at the top of the Division 1 schools, breaking out those super schools and stuff. But there were a few teams that, you know, fell one way or another with the new breakdown. Buckeye head coach Dave Boston Jr. beginning his 11th year. He's won seven Ohio Division titles. He's actually 48 and four in Ohio Division games coaching the Buckeyes. And of course he won three Hawking Division titles while coaching Alexander when they used to be in the Hawking Division. That was back in the late 80s, early 90s. He coached there for nine years. And of course heading up the Trimble Tomcats, longtime veteran Phil Ferris, he's beginning his 20th year, and what a great job he's done here with the Tomcats. Well, again, talking about the expectations of both teams, it starts with those head, two head coaches. They set the stage, they set the expectations, and they've got everybody wanting to win the ball games. And here come the Buckeyes wearing the visiting white. The Buckeyes come fired up out there. They're ready to play some ball, and the Trimble Tomcats now entering the field also. Tomcats, as you said, they're entering from our right here at Gloucester Stadium. Of course, the Buckeyes playing a lot of young players, and it's obviously important for them to get off to a good start tonight. You know, there's been a lot of talk. Obviously, the expectations for the game, the majority of folks are choosing the Tomcats because of the experience, because of the starters that they bring back to the table from last year's uh, playoff run. The Buckeyes are young. They've got a lot of position players, key individuals that are first time starters or have not had a whole lot of starting playing time at this level. So the expectation is that the Tomcats have the upper hand being at home and everything with the expectations that they've got for the state title. But I will also say, as you said, depending on how this ball game starts out, it can sway one way or another. Any team can win this ball game, and that's one thing uh, I've, I've talked about it before, Jim. I like the Nelsonville York Trimble Tomcat matchup. I love this game at the end of the season. At the end of the season, they've had a chance to kind of refine their offenses and defenses and really get into a better groove. At the beginning of a season like this, one of the key 
categories that you've got to watch are turnovers. The Buckeyes can't afford turnovers in this ball game. That is one thing that they know they've got to avoid. They've got to avoid those early mistakes or mistakes throughout the game at all. Tomcats basically the same thing. They've got the upper hand. They've got the expectations to win on their shoulders. But if they turn the ball over and give the Buckeyes some opportunities, it could sway the ball their way real quickly. Nelsonville York will be receiving tonight's opening kickoff from the Tomcats. Yeah, I believe uh, they won the toss uh, when they went out there. You had the four senior captains, Cannon Kilbarger, Jason Talbert, Eli Fox, and Neil Pauley out there for the Buckeyes. Bryce Nungester back deep for the Buckeyes. Also, Jeremy Warren and Alex Mount back deep. 35 seconds away from kickoff here at Gloucester Stadium. Doing the kicking for Trimble will be John Stevens. That's a name we've called over the last couple years pretty consistently. He's also one of the captains that came out for the Tomcats. The Tomcats had Connor Stanley, Bryce Smathers, Jacob Kuhn, and uh, John Stevens come out as the captains for the coin toss. And we're ready to go. Tomcats will kick it away to the Buckeyes to get this game underway. The approach by Stevens and the kick. And it's gonna bounce to Nungester. Crosses the 25 and he's upended right at the 25. Well, I believe that was number one Simmerly out there. Terry Simmerly upended Bryson uh, Nungaster right at about the 25 yard line. Terry Simmerly, a 5'4", 145 pound junior and he'll get after it. Yeah, again, he's another one of those that we have called his name consistently over the past couple years. So we're gonna continue to hear that, I'm sure. Buckeyes starting Noah Andrews, a freshman at fullback. Alex Mount, a freshman at tailback. Colt Adams at quarterback. Adams a junior. No wideouts. Option, pitch out goes to Mount. And he's hit and dropped for a loss back at the 23-yard line. I'm actually not sure who came up and make that to make that hit, Jimmy. I believe it was number five that time, Jacob Kish, but I wasn't sure on that far side of the ball. Or field. One, Alex Mount, the ball carrier. Buckeye is now facing a second down and about 12 on their own 23. Again, Colt Adams at quarterback. Again, real tight formation for the Buckeyes. Hand off to Noah Andrews, and he'll get it back to the original on the scrimmage and pick up an extra yard out to the 26, where to bring up third and nine. So he picks Six, up three yards. Down by 42. Well, again, Jake. two times the Buckeyes come to the uh, line of scrimmage, and he uh, and the Buckeyes have no wideouts. They're playing a real tight formation, and the Tomcats are really bunching up their defense inside the first five yards there also. Buckeyes splitting out two receivers to the right, one to the left. Colt Adams out of the shotgun, takes a snap, rolls right throws and it's knocked down incomplete and the Buckeyes will have to punt. I believe that was knocked down by number 65 if I saw that correctly. That was number 65, Micah Couch knocking the ball down. So the Buckeyes three and out and we'll have to give it up to the Tomcats and they're looking for excellent field position. There are two term men standing back on their own 40 yard line. Well, as you were saying, the Buckeyes wanted to get off to a, a good start in this ball game, get things rolling, and that's not the way the offense started things out here. First series, three and out. Jeremy Warren punts it away. Takes a Buckeye roll, and Nelson New York will down it at the 45 of Trimble, and that's where the Cats offense will have their first possession. Of course, Trimble led by Connor Stanley. He's a senior last year. 2,747 total yards, 1,288 come by rushing, 1,459 in the air. Well, I will tell you the one thing in regards to Connor Stanley, and you remember last year, the first half of that ball game last year over in Boston Field, Connor had an outstanding first half and set the 
Tomcats up for that win. Stanley still has it, comes to this side, throws wide open, and is caught. And that is Wyatt Bragg. Brought down by Cannon Kilbarger. Tremble first and 10 at the Buckeye 21 yard line. About a 30. First and 10. About 33 yards. So first down and 10 for the Tomcats at the Buckeye 22 is where they spot it. Connor did a nice job of hiding that ball as he rolled out to the right side that time. Stanley hands it off on the left side. Smathers, I believe, takes the ball around the left-hand side for the Tomcats, and he's upended by the Buckeyes number three defensively seven, that Bryce time. Smathers, that was Bryce mm -hmm. Smathers on the carry. He'll pick up about seven three, yards. Walker, Elliott, Walker Elliott in on the tackle that time. So it'll be second and three for the Cats at the Buckeye 15-yard line with 10.05 to play in the first quarter. No score. Trimble driving. Watch big number 42 in the backfield, Jacob Kuhn having an opportunity to get the ball here soon. Stanley will keep it himself, and he's got a first down down to the Buckeye eight yard line where it'll be first and goal. He picks up seven. Brought down by senior captain there, Eli Fox, along with uh, number 10, Dakota Mays, coming up on the tackle that time for the Buckeyes defensively. First and goal for Trimble at the Buckeye. Looks like they spotted at the nine yard line. Out of the eye, the Tomcats, Smathers at tailback, and he'll take the handoff on the right side. He's taken down right around the six-yard line. Second down and goal for Trimble. Cannon Kilbarger, Eli Fox, and Neil Pauly in on the stop that time for the Buckeyes defensively. Uh, Smathers gets some positive yards, but that did come from Kuhn. He was the lead blocker that time. And busted a nice little hole to get those few yards that he was able to get. Second and goal for Trimble at the Buckeye six. Connor Stanley at quarterback. Hands it off on the right side. Justice Jenkins, the ball and carrier. Justice Jenkins takes it down to the Buckeye one yard line. He Cannon, picks up five. Cannon Kilbarger comes up and makes the stop again that time for the Buckeyes defensively. 14, Justice Three, Jenkins, Elliott, just a tackle. sophomore for Trimble. Third down and three for the Tomcats. Buckeyes got to get strong here. Eight and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter. Tomcats knocking on the door already. Third and goal right around the Buckeye two. For Trimble. Stanley at quarterback. He'll keep it himself. And he is in for a Trimble touchdown. And a late flag comes in. Flag on the play. And sportsmanlike conduct, or no, it's a personal foul on Nelsonville, York. Personal foul against the Buckeyes. I don't know who it was called against specifically, but it was against the Buckeyes defense that time. Personal foul on the Buckeyes. It'll be marked off on the kickoff. So that penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So Tomcats strike first here in the early goings in the first quarter here. John Stevens attempting the point after touchdown. Austin Downs holding. And the kick is good. So 8.22 to play in the first quarter here at Gloucester Stadium. Trimble seven, Nelsonville York nothing. The official marks off the personal foul penalty against Nelsonville York on that touchdown run by Connor Stanley. So the Trimble will be kicking off from the Buckeye 45. And of course, Nelsonville York has to be aware of the onside kick possibility. Yeah, that's definitely the Number opportunity to run it when you're already on the, your, your the opponent's Tomcats. other side of the field there. I imagine Trimble will kick it deep and try to keep the Buckeyes back deep in their own territory. And they do so, John well, Stevens. goes into the end zone, through the end zone. So that will be a touchback and the Buckeyes will have it on their own 20. 8.22 to play in the first quarter. Trimble has struck first here in this football game. Yeah, the Buckeyes offensively just didn't, they weren't able to get anything going in that first series. We'll see if they get a little bit of different play calling or something to break things open here in the second offensive series of the ball game here for the Buckeyes. 
Buckeyes out of the eye with the receiver split out on each side. Colt Adams at quarterback. Jeremy Warren in motion to this side. Handoff goes to Mount. He has some running room. Alex Mount. And he'll take it out to the 39-yard line. Nice run by Alex Mount. Nice hole opened up on the right-hand side for the Buckeyes offensive line. Number five, Jake Kish at 20, Justice Jenkins. Uh, as I say, number 20, Justice Jenkins makes the wrap up first, and then Kish comes in to help bring him down. But Mount made a nice uh, burst through the hole there that the Buckeyes offensive line opened up for him. Pickup of 19, Buckeyes first down and 10 on their own 39. Man in motion to this side. And handoff goes to Mount, and he's cut down in the backfield. I tell you, Colin Lunsford got in there before anything was able to happen, I believe. So that will be a loss of two in the Buckeyes with a second down and 12 situation. 7.38 to play in the opening quarter. Trimble leading 7-0. Brings up second down and 12 for the Buckeyes. Buckeyes out of the eye, a receiver on each side. We're in motion to this side. Pitch out to Mount coming to this side, cuts it up. Breaks a tackle, Alex Mount, and he'll take it out to the 45. The Buckeyes will have a third down and four. Did a nice job of spinning away from that would-be tackler here. at the very beginning that time and get some right positive down, yardage. Dwayne Minor, Dwayne Minor 52, yards. and Stevens on the tackle there. Eight-yard pickup for Alex Mount. Buckeyes third down and four on their own 45. Buckeyes once again out of the eye. Receivers split out on each side. Colt Adams at quarterback. Hand off to Mount. And he'll go down short of the first down. They'll mark it close to the 48. Now they'll spot it back at the 47. The Buckeyes will have a fourth and two. That's going to be a tough situation for the Buckeyes. On one hand, you feel like you probably should punt it away, but on the other hand... Trimble with all their weapons. It's tempting to go for it, but you hate to give the Tomcat offense the ball there. Yeah, I was just going to say, you don't want to give them a great field position. At the same time, for the Buckeyes to be able to win today's ball game, they're going to have to take a few chances along the way, I believe. Jeremy Warren will punt it away for the Buckeyes. Gets it away. Nice punt by Warren. Taken at the 22. I believe that's Austin Downs on the far side, and he'll take it out to about the 32-yard line. Nungaster in on the stop, that 28. I couldn't pick up that. It was a 28 or a 20. Nice job by Bryson to get down there and make that tackle. So Trimble with their second possession. The first one ended in a Connor Stanley two-yard touchdown run. If you're a Buckeye fan, though, that second series, the Buckeyes seemed to settle down a little bit more. The offensive line was doing a nice job of opening up a few holes. See if the defense can stand tall here now. Stanley looking to throw, does so. Buckeyes good coverage, and it falls incomplete. Tom Great Katz coverage. trying to hit Wyatt Bragg on that pass. Against Bryson Martinez back there, or Nungaster back there again, and uh, Cannon Kilbarker coming over from the backside also. Trimble with a second down and 10 on their own 32-yard line, 5.28 to play. Here in the first quarter, the clock is running and officials trying to get it stopped on the incomplete pass. Buckeyes Tom. staying with a five-man front defensively here. Stanley runs to this side oh, and the rotten. Buckeyes take him down back at the 28. A loss of four. Jacob Talbert and Dakota Mays come flying in there on the blitz for the Buckeyes. Seven, and drop him for a three-yard loss. Brings up a third down and 13 for Trimble. Back on their own 29. Five-man front did a nice job of tying up the offensive line that time, and the both linebackers just shot right through there and got, got a hold of Connor. Buckeyes go back to the four-man front here. 4-3-D. Stanley looking to throw. Looks to this side, throwing long. 
And it falls incomplete. Once again, pretty good coverage by the Buckeyes. I will say excellent coverage. Nungaster was right there with him all the way. And again, that time you had Walker Elliott coming over to help out defensively. But both times, Bryson Nungaster right there defensively for the Buckeyes. And the clock continues to run again on an incomplete pass. I don't think the Buckeyes are going to say anything. You want to shorten up this game <laughs> as much as possible with the explosive Trimble offense. Yeah, I can't believe the coaching staff hasn't said anything, though. But Fourth and 13 for Trimble. Nice snap. Tomcats get the punt away. Short punt, and it's going to land in Trimble territory, but it'll bounce in the Buckeye territory. And Nelson New York will have good field position on their own 48-yard line. Tristan Conway, the punter for Trimble. Excellent defensive stance that time for the Buckeyes. Hey, Time, right. Timeout on the field. 7-0. Tomcats, 3.52 to play in the first quarter. Buckeyes first and 10 on their own 48 out of the eye. Two receivers to the right, one to this side. Cold Adams hands it off on a draw play, Alex Mount. Nice move by Alex that time. And he spins away, and now he'll be taken down at the Trimble 42. Looks like he has a Buckeye first Real down. Real close to a first down as he did not go down easily. The Buckeyes are doing a better job at the line right now, both offensively and defensively. They're opening some things up, and uh, Alex is taking advantage of it. First down and 10, Buckeyes at the 42, a gain of about 11 for Alex Mount. <coughs> Buckeyes splitting out two receivers to the right. Colt Adams looking to throw Dust over the middle and it falls incomplete, trying to get it to Cannon Kilbarger. In coverage for the Tomcats was number 42, Coons. Jacob Coons. So the Buckeyes now second and 10 at the Trimble 42. The Tomcats up 7-0. Real quick, I want to say the offensive line this time for the Buckeyes. They're doing a nice job out there. Number 54, Eli Fox. 58, Jason Riffle. 59, Jay Elliott. 76, Neil Polly. And 77, Patrick McQuaid. Maze in motion to this side. Draw play goes to Mount. And he's going to be hit and dropped for a two-yard loss. John Stevens, and along with number 56 Jacob that time, Jacob Altier, and on the stop that time for the Tomcats defensively. Buckeyes did not get much of a surge off the line that time and did not, uh, didn't give Mount much room to work with. So the Buckeyes now facing third and 13. It was a three-yard loss back to the Trimble 46. 2.37 to play in the opening quarter. Again, Trimble leading 7-0. Third and long here for the Buckeyes. Warren and Kilbarger split out wide right. Warren in motion to this side. Pitch out to Alex Mount. Nice blocking around the right side, but Coons did a nice job coming in from the linebacker position that time. Number 42 defensively for the Tomcats. Read that one very well. Alex Mountain dropped right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and the Buckeyes with a fourth and 13. And they will have to punt it away. Austin Downs and Terry Simmerly back deep for Trimble. Jeremy Waring will punt it away for the Buckeyes. You can feel both teams kind of set Oh, high snap, and it's over Waring's head. Let's see if he can run with it or actually kick it away. And he'll be taken down back at the 28 yard line. 22, Jeremy Warren, the ball so obviously we talked, the Buckeyes cannot have turnovers and that's as good as a turnover there. Tomcats taking over at the Buckeye 28. Ends up being about a 20 yard negative play for the Buckeyes on that high snap that time. 1.42 to play in the first quarter. Trimble up 7-0, and they have the ball first and 10 at the Buckeye 28. Cats out of the eye. Two receivers split out on the right. Hand off to Smathers up the middle. Breaks a tackle. And ball was out. Let's see if he did fumble. He must have because the piles 
still going, and the refs are just watching it, not blowing it dead. And Nelson Buckeyes got the ball. Has recovered. So the Buckeyes had a bad snap over the punter's head, giving Trimble great field position, but then the Tomcats promptly give it right back to the Buckeyes. Well, that's what I was talking about earlier. The Buckeyes need to be able to force some turnovers, get the ball over into their favor. And uh, first turn, big turnover goes over to the Buckeyes. So the Buckeyes first and 10 on their own 14 yard line. Out of the eye. Hand off to Mount. And he has positive yardage as he takes it out to about the 17. A late flag comes in. Mount picks up about One, three. Jacob Coons in on the tackle Jacob again. On the tackle. There is a flag on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Nelson New York. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Nelson New York Buckeyes. Boy, that, that type of thing just is going to kill the Buckeyes. That just can't happen. No, you can't allow that to happen. You're right. In, in a situation where you just get the ball turned back over, you have a nice defensive play, force the fumble, get the ball, give it back over to your offense. Uh, you can't help yourself by going backwards. So the Buckeyes will have a first down and about 18, second down actually. Ball spotted back on the nine-yard line. Like Connor Hammond came in with the playoff sideline for the Buckeyes. Cold Adams at quarterback, man in motion to this side. Handoff goes to Mount, I believe. He'll take it out to about the 12-yard line. Clock running, 50 seconds remaining here in the first Juan quarter. Alex Mount, the ball carrier, 65, Micah Couch on the tackle. Micah Couch on the Couch. stop that time for the Tomcats. Buckeyes now with a third down and about 12 on their own 12-yard line. Brings up third down and 12 for the Buckeyes. Buckeyes splitting out two receivers on each side. Colt Adams runs it on a quarterback draw. And he'll take it out to about the 19-yard line. Not enough for a first down, but gives the Buckeyes a little bit of breathing. Similarly on the stop that time for the Tomcats defensively. Buckeyes will have a fourth and six, and they will have to punt it away. But the clock hits zero here in the first quarter. That's the end of the first period. Trimble leading Nelsonville York, 7-0. Buckeyes facing a fourth and six as we begin the second quarter of play. Ball resting at the Buckeye 18 yard line. So Trimble looking to get good field position with Austin Downs and Terry Simmerly standing at midfield. Jeremy Wareham will punt it away for the Buckeyes. And flags come in, whistles blow the play dead. And we, it looks like we have a legal procedure on Nelson New York, and we do. So that will make it fourth down and about 11. Illegal, illegal procedure. That doesn't change the complexity of the play all that much, five yards. However, it does put Jeremy now, from a punting perspective, right in the middle of the end zone, or right at the goal line. Good snap this time. Waring gets it away, a short kick. Bounces at the Buckeye 27 and will be downed at the 28-yard line. That's where Trimble will have the football. Don't get any easier for the Buckeyes next week. They will travel next Saturday First night to Newark Catholic. And Trimble will actually open league play at Wahama. The Biggest league game of the year, and it's the second game of the season, the first league game. I was just going to say, they start out with two of the biggest games they've got all season. Uh, Matchup here the against the Buckeyes starting out the season, and then moving number. right to Wahama right next game. You're right. Could very easily dick decide the uh, TBC Hawking early in the season. And we have movement on the Trimble line, so we'll have a legal procedure. And 
Trimble will have first and 15 at the Buckeye 33. Ball start on the Tomcats. Actually at the 34, first and 15. Five yard penalty, still first down. Trimble with the man split out on each side. Stanley will run it to this side. And he'll be taken down right around the Buckeye 31-yard line as he picks up three yards. Eli Fox did a nice job from the defensive end that time, turning Connor, Connor upfield, and then Jacob Talbert making the tackle for the Buckeyes. 27, Jacob Talbert on the tackle. 11.25 to play in the first half. Trimble leading 7-0, and they have the ball at the Buckeye 31, second down and 12. Jenkins split out wide left, downs wide right. Stanley takes a snap, a low one. He throws to the side, and let's see, it's incomplete. Justice Jenkins, the intended receiver. Well, I tell you right there, Donovan Ross on the defensive end that time almost was able to swat that ball out of the air as Connor was kind of eyeballing uh, over to the left side of the field pretty strong that time. Third down and 12 for the Tomcats at the Buckeye 31. Looks like they're going to try to air things out here. Stanley takes a snap. He'll run with it on the left side, and a flag does come in right around the line of scrimmage. Stanley takes it to the Buckeye 14, but we have holding. That one's coming back. Holding on Trimble. Flag on the play. Well, I thought they were going to try to air it out, and uh, the Buckeyes defense was kind of looking for the same thing. And Tomcats were able to bust open a hole on the left-hand side, and Connor Stanley made the best of it. He was brought down out there by Kilbarger and uh, Elliott. But with the holding, that will bring him back all the way out to the 40-yard line. Trimble at the Buckeye 40, third down now, and about 22 to go. Two receivers to the right, Trimble out of the eye. Stanley back to pass, rolls right. Looking to throw, now he's looking to run. And Stanley will go down after a gain of about three. Nice tackle by the Buckeyes. I believe it was number 10, Dakota Mays over there. Dakota Mays for the Buckeyes. Fourth down for Trimble, fourth down and about 19, maybe 17. So the question is, are they gonna punt the ball? Are they gonna try to go for it and figure they've already got the Buckeyes pinned back a little ways here. Clock running under 10 minutes to play in the second quarter. Trimble leading 7-0. Tomcats will go for it. Fourth down and about 18 to go. At the Buckeye 37. Big play early in the ball game here for both sides Stanley of the ball. looking to throw. Throws long to this side. Buckeyes in good coverage again. And it's caught by Austin Downs down at the Buckeye 14-yard line. I will tell you the truth, I thought Kilbarger was going to come down with that interception. Somehow the ball gets tipped up, Downs keeps it. a good eye on the ball. Good concentration by Austin Downs. Excellent concentration to be able to hold on to that one and bring that one in. That was an excellent play for them. And again, just a hair away from Kilbarger coming away from either knocking that down or intercepting that ball. So Trimble picks up the first down at the Buckeye 13, first down and 10. Jacob Kish at quarterback under center, hands it off to Stanley, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield by Noah Andrews. Noah Andrews read that one very well. Got in the backfield and didn't allow anything to get rolling. Of course, Andrews, just a freshman for the Buckeyes, one of several freshmen playing. <laughs> Loss of a couple, second down and 12 for Trimble. Back at the 16-yard line. Ward split out left, downs right. Stanley will run with it on this side, and he's hit. 
Jay Elliott wrapped him up as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage that time. He'll get it to the Buckeye 14, where it'll bring up third down and 12. He picks up one. 59, Jay Elliott on the tackle. Eight ten to play in the first half. Trimble up 7-0. Right now the Buckeyes defense overall has been playing pretty strong after that first series. They've given up a couple long pass plays, but other than that, defensively, they're really uh, containing a lot of the strength of the... And that pass is incomplete. It hit the ground. Pass over to Austin Downs. Stanley's incomplete pass to number 10, Austin Downs. <laughs> So that stops the clock, 7.52 to play in the first half. Trimble will face a fourth down and 12. Of course, they just converted a fourth and about 18 just minutes ago. To this point, Connor Stanley is, I got him uh, two completions on six attempts for 60 yards. Two major pass plays that have put the Tomcats in strong position yet again. Nelson New York takes a timeout, 7.52 to play before halftime. Tomcats up, 7-0. Fourth down and 12 for Trimble, just outside the Buckeye 15 yard line. It's one of those situations, fourth and 11, you're down deep in somebody's territory. Uh, I would not put it past Ferris to come up with a little pitch play pass or some little trickery type thing trying to get something to happen here. Stanley back to pass, throws back to this side, wide open, Austin Downs Stanley. at the five, 20, and he's in for the touchdown. Takes it in for a touchdown, Tomcats. Fourth and 11, Tomcats at the Buckeye 15, and they score the touchdown. And they lead 13-0 with the extra point attempt upcoming. Boy, overall, the Buckeyes have done a nice job of containing this powerful offense of the Tomcats. It's just been those three major pass plays that have really done them in. The first one, 33 yards down the sidelines, that 20-yard 20 20 pass play to Downs, and then On that one right there. fourth and 18, of course, that and great then, concentration, Boston Downs, to catch that after it was knocked and then 4th and 11 just there. Two fourth down pass plays that turned into the favor of the Tomcats. John Stevens will attempt the extra point with Austin Downs holding. Good snap, kick is up. Kick is no good, I believe it was off to the left. But the Tomcats lead 13-0, 7.43 to play in the first half. John Stevens will kick it away. Nice kick. Strong kick. Taken by Nungester back at the seven yard line. Crosses the Buckeye 20, spins, and then is driven back. And they will mark his forward progress down at the Buckeye 23. Well, seven and a half minutes to play here in the first half. The Buckeyes to this point have gotten a little bit stronger as the game's gone on. Those two big fourth First down defensive ten, stands that they were unable to uh, contain the Tomcats on that last series. But again, the Tomcats didn't get the extra point. They're only up by 13. Buckeyes have been moving the ball a little bit better. Be nice to see them be able to march down the field and uh, put some points on the board before halftime. Buckeyes out of the power eye. Adams hands it off to Mount. One, Alex Mount and he's here. still fighting for yardage. He'll take it out to about the 27. He picks up about four yards for the Buckeyes. And I believe Connor Stanley was the first to hit him. And they're giving 52 Miner also credit for the tackle. Once again, Buckeyes out of the power eye. Second down and six, handoff, I believe, to Andrews. He'll take it out to the 31 yard line. Buckeyes will be a couple yards shy of a first down. Six, Noah Andrews, the ball carrier. Brings up third and two. Jacob Coons on the tackle. Jacob Coons on the tackle that time for the Tomcats. I've got, Mount has now ran the ball 10 times for 38 yards I have. And that was the second carry for Noah. He's got seven yards. Third and about two for the Buckeyes. Hammonds in motion to the left. Hand off to Andrews, fighting for yardage, but he's gonna go down. Six, he picks Andrews, up. 
a yard, but the Buckeyes will be one yard shy of that first now. <laughs> Fourth and one. What? Real close here to getting that first down. And I'll tell you, the defense of the Tomcats, they were all within five yards and within the hash marks that time. There was no spread on that defense at all. And the Buckeyes appear to be going for it here on fourth and one. Of course, they might just try to draw the Tomcats off sides. As Tom. you mentioned earlier, the Buckeyes need to take some chances if they want to try to win this game, and they well, look like they, they got pick it. up the first down. I think they got a good spot there from the line judge coming off the far side of the ball First that down, time. Buckeyes. Nice surge by the offensive line that time to help the Buckeyes again. Like you said, they're going to have to take a few chances like line that. Andrews, Did a nice period. job. <laughs> Picks up a first and 10 for the Buckeyes. Jeremy Warren coming in with the Buckeye play on first and 10. Nelsonville York on their own 34. Five and a half minutes to play before halftime. Trimble leading 13-0. Buckeyes out of the eye. Hand off to Mount. And he'll go down right around the 36-yard line. Terry Simmerly in on the first hit that time for the Tomcats. And it looks like Simmerly may have an, a, a helmet issue as he comes trotting off the field. Pickup of one, Buckeye second and nine, just across their own 35. Colt Adams at quarterback under center. Pitch out goes to Mount on the left side, has some running room, and he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. I believe that was number five, Kish, on the tackle that time for the Tomcats. Five, Buckeyes will have a third and three. Pickup of about six for Mount. Trying to get him the out, get him to the corner there, let him use some of that speed, get around the edge that time. He got some nice, strong, positive yards. The Buckeyes are doing a nice job of eating up the clock here on this series. They got the ball back with about seven and a half minutes here to play in the first half, and it's already down just about four minutes to play here before halftime. Third and three for the Buckeyes. Hammond's in motion. Pitch out to Mount. No, it's Jeremy Warren, and he's cut down right at the line of scrimmage. Simmerly and Coons in on the stop that time. 22, Jeremy Warren, the ball carrier. 42. Buckeyes now a fourth and down and on the for the top about three. And the Buckeyes will punt it away. Three forty to play in the second quarter. And T.J. Warren will punt it away for Nelsonville York this time. Similarly in downs back deep for Trimble. Nice snap. Oh, he dropped the ball. Warren running with it. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the first down. He got it to about a yard away, but he's brought down at the Buckeye 43, and the Tomcats will take over Great. right there with 317 to play. Number two, TJ was area. almost able to pull 40, that 40, one out of there that time. The so the Buckeyes have had a couple issues on special teams with the snap over the punter's head and now the snap being dropped on that one. And Tomcats will have excellent field position. Again, 317 to play before the half. Tomcats leading 13 0. Beans Tomcats first and ten at the Buckeye 43. Big series on both sides of the ball here. Stanley throws towards Simmerly and it falls incomplete. For one, Terry Simmerly incomplete. Buckeyes are within two scores right now. Three minutes to go before halftime. And at this point, if they can hold them, go into the second half, that'd be an excellent position for the Buckeyes to be in right now. They do not want to give up any more points at this point. Tomcats split out two receivers to the right, one to the left. On second down and 10 at the Buckeye 43, Stanley throws a slant. Austin Downs pulls it in, breaks a tackle. And he's still going, Austin Downs, down to the Buckeye 14 yard line. Eight to number 10, Austin Downs picking up a first and 10, Tomcats. Brought down by Jacob Talbert finally that time as the Buckeyes just were not able to wrap downs up that time. 
2.50 to remaining here in the second quarter. Again, Trimble up 13-0, and the Tomcats first and 10 at the Buckeye 14. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Stanley keeps it himself up the middle. And he'll take it down to the Buckeye 11-yard line, a gain of a couple yards. Brought down by Neil Pauley that time defensively for the Buckeyes. Gain of three, brings up second and seven. So, so far the Tomcats have found that they can move the ball pretty effectively in the air. Buckeyes still containing the running part of the game, but going to have to figure out a way to uh, slow this passing game down. Two receivers right, one to the left again. Stanley throws over the middle, and it falls incomplete. Intended for 15 that time and for the to Tomcats. Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward, the intended receiver. I believe it's Jeremy Warren back there defending. I'm not sure actually if it was him or Cannon, one of the two in that bar, far back side. Trimble third and seven. At the Buckeye 11-yard line. It's building up two receivers to the right. Connor Stanley under center. Fakes the handoff. Stanley looking to pass. Rolling right. Throws. And let's see if it's a catch. It is incomplete. Pass incomplete to number 42. So Trimble Jacob will Hayes. face a fourth and seven. And, of course, their last couple of fourth down plays they picked up on that last touchdown drive a fourth and 18 and then fourth down and about seven I believe and they scored a touchdown on that one yeah that they've only completed four passes two of them being on fourth down situations I think they might be trying to kick a field goal though Stevens is putting on his other boot and Stevens has the leg that's we've seen for that in sure. the past Trimble may take a timeout here to save the delay of game penalty. Timeout, Trimble. And Trimble does take the timeout. 145 to play in the first half. Trimble leading 13-0. John Stevens will attempt a 28-yard field goal for the Tomcats. Austin Downs will hold. John Stevens is back to kick a field goal for the Trimble Tomcats. Fourth down and about seven for the Cats. Good snap. Kick is up, and it's going to no be off good. to the right. No good. So the Buckeyes will take over on their own 20-yard line with a minute 42 left to work with here in the second quarter. So the Buckeyes defensively stand tall, get the job done, and hold the Tomcats to uh, no more points on the board. Nice job by the Buckeyes defense that time. Trimble leading 13-0 here at Gloucester Stadium. Another great crowd, of course, for this annual rivalry game, people standing around the fence and the stands are full. Well, you get a, you know, you get to see some of the pre-season type scrimmages and stuff, but this is the first opportunity to really see the both teams in full action, you know, full go. And being on a Saturday night, it gives the the fans from around the area the opportunity to come out and really get a view of both teams here and you can see the crowd is strong out here tonight. Buckeyes first and 10 on their own 20. Hand off on a draw play. Alex Mount, and he'll pick up a couple to the 22. One Alex Mount, the ball carrier. One Terry Simley in on the tackle. They say the it's a gain back. of one yard for Mount. Second down and nine for the Buckeyes on their own 21. Minute 17 to play here in the half. Buckeyes splitting out two receivers on each side. Noah Andrews in the backfield along with quarterback Colt Adams. Adams fakes the handoff. He runs with it himself. And he'll take it out to the 27-yard line. And the late flag comes in. Brought down by Jacob Coons that time and another uh, penalty after the play. 42, Jacob Coons on the tackle. Penalty on the Buckeyes.
One minute, Blocking one second to play York, in the second quarter. Blocking the back called on Nelsonville York. Penalties have definitely hurt the Buckeyes on the offensive side of the ball. <laughs> so the Buckeyes will have a second down and 15. And Trimble will take a timeout. 58 seconds to play in the second quarter. And again, the Tomcats up 13-0. Buckeye second down and about 15 after the penalty. Colt Adams out of the gun. Hands it off to Jeremy Warren, and he'll take it out close to the 20-yard line. <laughs> Trimble will take another timeout. Tomcats hoping to get the ball back here before halftime. 53 seconds to play in the second quarter, and again, Trimble up 13-0. Buckeyes third down and 10. On their own 20. Two receivers to the right for the Buckeyes. One, pardon me, two to the left also. Adams looking to pass. Now he'll run. A quarterback draw. Gets a block. And Adams will take it out to the 31-yard line. He's got a Buckeye first down. Seven, Colton Adams, the ball carrier. Nice run by Colton that time. Took a pretty good shot, but then he kept going. Kept those feet churning. First you know, and 10 Buckeyes. If people haven't been out to see Colton uh, on the track, he actually has some pretty good speed. You just got to give him a little bit of open room, and that time he was able to make some good with it. Hand off to Jeremy Warren, and he's brought down after a gain of one. Gets it out to the 32-yard line, second down and nine for the Buckeyes. Clock running, 22 seconds to play here in the first half. Jacob Kuhn in on the stop again that time for the Tomcats. That very likely might be the last play of the half. Buckeyes do not seem to be in any hurry. Clock running at five seconds. And it will be halftime here at Gloucester Stadium. The Tomcats leading the Buckeyes 13 to nothing. Now entering the field, the pride of the Buckeyes, the Nelson New York High School, the marching band. The marching Buckeyes have been kicking into the heat, and they're ready to entertain you tonight with two members from this year's competition show. Featuring solos from senior trumpet player, Kenzie Warren, we proudly present the music from the famous show at Walt Disney World's Hollywood Studios. Here is Fantasmic.
Tomcat and Buckeye fans, it's time to get on your feet and dance to the beat. It's a great night for football, and you can be sure that both teams will be giving it their all. Here's the 1973 hit by Bachman Turner Overdrive, taking care of business.
All right, let's hear one more time for the Bride of the Buckeyes, the Nelson New York High School Marching Band. All right, we're back here in Gloucester where the Tomcats are up over top the Buckeyes, 13 to zero at halftime. And you know, one of the things that we were talking about there at halftime, Jim, is the fact that even though the Buckeyes are down by 13, they've got to feel like they're in a pretty good position. They've played strong. And when you look at some of the stats of the ball game, you'd be surprised that they are in the position they are. The Buckeyes, although they have not been able to put any yards up in the air so far, they're 0 for 2 in the passing department, but they've carried the ball. 23 times for 80 yards, so they're moving the ball effectively on the ground. Penalties have hurt them at times on the offensive side of the ball. Tomcats, on the other hand, even though they've got the 13-point lead, they've only carried the ball. I've got them 11 carries for 26 yards. And in the passing side of the ball, they are 4 of 11 for 101 yards, so a total of 127 yards. However, only 26 yards on the ground, and four pass plays. So if the Buckeyes can find a way to get rid of some of these uh, defensive kind of, I'll, I'll just say a lapse in allowing the long play on the air and uh, continue to do what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball from a running or rushing attack defensively, they're gonna put themselves in a strong position here to find a way into this ball game and uh, compete as the second half continues on. Trimble up 13-0 as we begin the second half. Tomcat scoring a touchdown in each of the first two quarters. Had the two-yard touchdown run by Connor Stanley, and then the uh, I have it for about a 12-yard pass play from Stanley to Downs. Jordan Atkins will kick it away. Terry Simmerly. Austin Downs back deep. Downs will take it right around the 25. Comes to the outside, and he'll be taken down at the 37-yard line. Nice open field tackle that time by Connor Hammonds, I believe, number 33 for the Buckeyes defensively. As Downs tried to find his way to get around to the corner. Tomcats first and 10 on their own 33 as we begin the second half. Connor Stanley at quarterback. Cats with two receivers split out wide right. Stanley under center. And he'll hand it off. Nice hard running. And that's something we did not see in the first half at all. That's the first run I've got for Coons coming out of the backfield. He's a big back for the uh, Tomcats. And as you can see right there, more of a bruising back. Uh, North-south runner going to run right into folks. Jacob Coons, six foot two, 200 pound senior. Picks up eight yards, second down and two for Trimble. We have an official's timeout. And we're ready to go. Second down and two for Trimble on their own 45 yard line. Two receivers split out wide right, downs in motion. Hand off once again to Coons and he breaks another tackle, takes it into Buckeye territory to about the 48 yard line. Walker Elliott trips him up that time. First down and 10, Trimble again at the Buckeye 47. So the Tomcats have come out here in the second half. They weren't able to run the ball effectively at all in the first half of the ball game, and now they come out here in the second half and running strong with Coons. Stanley keeps it himself around the right side, being rushed. Found and he's got a first down. Nice run by Connor Stanley down to the Buckeye 35-yard line. Found his way to the corner that time. Picks up about 13 yards. First down and 10, Trimble. And they've they spotted already, at the 36 of the Buckeyes. They've actually already ran the ball more now than they did the entire first half. We did have a pretty good rain coming down at halftime. It subsided as we began the second half. First down and 10, Trimble, Stanley under center. Hands it off to Coons. And he'll take it down to the Buckeye 32 yard line as he picks up about four yards. Look like Neil Pauly and I, 
Dakota Mays in on the stop that time for the Buckeyes. I believe David Ray in there. Second down and six for the Tomcats. Again at the Buckeye 32. Trimble leading 13-0. Two minutes deep into the third quarter of play. Stanley takes a snap. And he has some running room, Connor Stanley. And he'll take it down to the Buckeye 17-yard line. Picks up about 16 yards. Kilbarger in on the stop that time, but that was a great blocking job by the Tomcats front line and then Kuhn also. So the Tomcats trying to capture the momentum here beginning the third quarter of play. Already leading by two scores, trying to make it a three touchdown lead. First down and 10 at the Buckeye 17. Stanley out of the shotgun, two receivers to the left. He'll throw to Downs, he pulls it in. Austin Downs uses a stiff arm, still, still running. Feet. And he finally goes down, but not before he gets to the Buckeye two yard line. Nice run by Austin Downs. He was able to dance along the sideline, avoid people that are trying to knock him down and push him out of bounds and just kept finding a way to get more yards. And like you said, he found his way all the way down inside the five to under about the two or three. First down and goal to go for Trimble. They say it's on the three yard line. Connor Stanley under center. Let's see if Jacob Coons gets it. And they run into each other. Stanley will keep it himself. A flag comes in. And Stanley dives into the end zone for the score. But again, a flag is down. For Connor Stanley, the ball carrier. And we're going to have holding on Tribble. So the touchdown is negated. I'm not so sure I didn't see a second flag come flying, too. There was flags that flew after the ball. You may be right. Ball. The official's now talking things over. Yep, I'm pretty sure a dead ball foul came out of there at, while he was making the call on the holding. Nice flag was tossed. Again, holding on Trimble. Holding on the offense. Another penalty on sportsmanlike conduct on the Buckeyes. On the defense. Replay the down. You know, we talked about this also. You just can't have the dead ball fouls that the Buckeyes have put on against themselves. They're hurting themselves uh, in more than one situation here tonight doing that. So first and goal for Trimble, right around the five yard line. Now the eye, Coons at fullback, Smathers at tailback, Stanley under center at quarterback. Handoff goes to Bryce Smathers and he'll take it down to about the three yard line. Picks up a couple yards for Trimble. I think it was number 62 that brought him down that that's time. That's Matt Carter, another Buckeye 62, freshman. Matt Carter yep. on the tackle. Second and goal for the Tomcats at the Buckeye three. Ward and down, split out wide right. Now the eye once again with Coons at fullback and Smathers at tailback. Connor Stanley hands it off to Bryce Smathers. Still running, and he'll be brought down right around the one-yard line. And a flag comes in. Another flag after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Nelsonville York. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the Buckeyes. I 
something of that nature. Trimble second and goal. Right around the Buckeye two yard line. Stanley will keep it himself and he's in for the touchdown. So Trimble leads 19 nothing. 7.44 to play in the third quarter. Let's see if Trimble might go for two. Again, that last extra point was no good for the Tomcats on their second touchdown. Well, that's the, actually, you know, the Buckeyes helped the Tomcats out with a couple penalties, obviously, there. But that's the best solid drive the Tomcats had this entire game. They were able to move the ball effectively in the air in the first half, get some big plays. But that's really the first series that they just controlled the ball down the field. Trimble will go for the two-point conversion. Austin Downs in motion to the right. Stanley throws a quick slant. And it's intercepted by Nelsonville York after a tip ball at the line. Eli Fox tips the ball right at the line that time. Ball bounces straight up in the air. So the Buckeyes hold on the two-point conversion attempt, but Trimble leads 19-0, 7.42 to play, third quarter. John Stevens will kick it away for Trimble. Buckeyes with Jeremy Waring back deep. Stevens with the approach and the kick, a nice kick. Warren will run it down back at the 12-yard line of the Buckeyes. Takes it to the middle of the field. Takes it to the left side, and he'll cross the 30 and get it to about the 32-yard line. Brought down by number 42, Jacob Coons. 42, Jacob Coons on the tackle. Well, seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. The Buckeyes need to find a way to get some points on the board, Jimmy. Colton Adams at quarterback for the Buckeyes. Nelsonville York first and 10 from their own 32. They played a lot of uh, game control in the first half trying to use the clock to their advantage and keep the offense of the Tomcats off the field, but now down by three scores, they're gonna have to try to open things up a little bit. No Andrews in motion this side. Adams looks to throw, he hits Andrews with it, but he's hit and dropped for a loss. Good Boy. coverage. Connor Stanley read that one perfectly, and he hit Noah on a, on a dead sprint that time. Loss of two for the Buckeyes back to the 29, brings up second and 12. Connor Hammonds comes in with the Buckeye play. Buckeyes out of the eye, a receiver split out on each side on second and 12. From their own 29, handoff goes to Mount. And Alex Mount takes it out to the 35-yard line. Gets about five yards on the carry that time. Buckeyes will have a third down and about seven now. Third and seven from their own 35. Again, Trimble up 19-0 with six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Okay. Guys, two receivers split out on each side. Colton Adams out of the shotgun, takes a snap. Quarterback draw, and Adams is hit hard. He's close to a first down, but he is just shy of it. But Buckeyes will probably go for it on this fourth and one situation. Down by 19. Kish came up and made the tackle, but like you said, uh, Colt takes a pretty big hit that time. Pops right back up, and he's ready to go. Buckeyes will go for it on fourth and one. And we have an official's timeout. 5.52 to play in the third quarter. Trimble up 19 0. Official's timeout. So it was an official's timeout for a measurement. The Buckeyes just inches shy of the first down. About a football length to get the first down on this situation right here for the Buckeyes right after that measurement. So the Buckeyes fourth and short. They will go for it from their own 42-yard line. Andrews and Mount in the backfield. Adams at quarterback as Waring goes in motion. And we have movement. 
I'm not sure who they're going to call this on. Legal procedure on Nelsonville York. Illegal procedure on the Buckeyes. Boy, that's a tough one to call right there. That, that was a bang, bang. I'm not sure who came across the line or moved first. But they say it was the Buckeyes that backs him up, and the Buckeyes will end up punting the ball. <laughs> Brings up a fourth and six, so the Buckeyes will punt. Jeremy Wareham will punt it away. Austin Downs and Terry Simmerly back deep to receive the punt. High snap, Wareham pulls it down, gets it away. Coming towards Austin Downs, takes it up to 31. Good pursuit by the Buckeyes, and Downs will go down at the 33, and that's what you want to do is bottle him up before he gets going. Well, that was actually uh, one of Jeremy's better kicks. There's a flag back at the play back here at the line of scrimmage. Dakota Mays dead, nice coverage that time. Penalty on Trimble, personal foul. Now let's see if it was on roughing the kicker or if, if it was after the kick, so Trimble will keep it. Let's see who will have the ball. I'm guessing it's going to be after the kick, and I would say Trimble's going to end up with the ball, but. Five, 10 to play in the third quarter. Trimble up 19, nothing. They're saying Jackson up on Wellston, 41 to six tonight. So Trimble will keep the ball and the 15 yard mark off will go against the Cats. Drop him down to about the 19 yard line. <laughs> Five, 10 to play in the third quarter. First series here, the second half, the Tomcats came out and ran the ball a lot more effectively than they did in the entire first half. Really ate up a lot of the clock and moved the ball downfield. See if they open things back up or if they keep giving it to the Bruiser Coons in the backfield. Two receivers to the right. Stanley takes a snap, throws to Downs, pulls it in. Austin Downs knocked out of bounds. Looks like a pickup of about seven yards. Bryson Nungaster in on the stop that time. Three, Walker Let's see Elliott. where they mark it. Walker Elliott. 28, Bryson Nungaster on the Pick up of eight yards, five. second down and two for Trimble. <laughs> well, I tell you what, the nice job uh, blocking out there that time by uh, Jimmy Ward, number 15 for the Tomcats to free up downs and allow him to get that yardage. Tomcats on their own 27. Hand off to Coons, running room for Jacob Coons, and he's upended at the 40. He picks up about 13 yards for Trimble and a first down. Cannon Kilbarger makes the stop. 14, Cannon Kilbarger on the tackle. Four fifty-five to play, clock running here in the third quarter. Trimble up by three touchdowns. So far, the third quarter's kind of gone their way. First and 10, Tomcats on their own 41. Stanley takes a snap, hands it off to Coons. Jacob Coons driving up the middle, and he's going to pick up eight more yards. Brought down by Neil Polly, but you're right, he gets another strong eight yards. Jacob Coons, the ball carrier. Yeah, you know, Coons has really come out here and ran strong in the second half, and the Buckeyes defense is having a hard time containing him. He didn't carry the ball at all in the first half. He's got five carries, averaging eight yards a carry. He's got 41 yards. Pickup of seven yards brings up second and three for Trimble. Everyone would please get out there 50 50 tickets. Ball resting just inside the Cat 49. It's your red ticket. And it's for $850. Jacob Coons, the lone back for Trimble. Connor Stanley Number under center five, quarterback. Nine, seven, eight. And Coons takes a snap. Uh, or pardon me, he takes a handoff from Stanley. And he was hit initially, but he breaks away and gets close to a first down at the Buckeye 49. Let's see if he has it. Look like David Ray in on the stop that time for the Buckeyes along with Jordan Atkins. I was going to say, they do say first down. I was going to say sitting from here. It looked like he has the first down. Yeah. But for a moment, I thought they were going to say it was third down. But they do mark, signal the first down. Trimble first and 10 at the Buckeye 
48. Buckeyes defense test to try to make something happen here. Three and a half minutes to go. Ball oh. on the ground. The snap rolled back to Stanley. He picks it up. And he takes it back to the right side. Connor Stanley. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the Buckeye 32. There Not is a flag down across the way. Well, that, anytime you start reversing the field that many times, you're going to turn people's heads, turn kids around, and get things in a possibility where someone's going to get hurt. Connor Stanley, again, the snap rolled back to him. It is a legal block in the back on Trimble. And the Connor Stanley making something out of nothing there, but it will be called back. Very elusive running by Connor Stanley that time. And that, you know, that goes back to visions of last year, how he was able to just run with the ball, for the most part in the first half of the ball game against the Buckeyes last year. But again, every time you start reversing the field and that, that many times and that much, you may feel like you're going somewhere fast, but you're turning the heads of your blockers and getting people in position just to have that type of thing happen right there. A penalty against the Tomcats backs them up. First down on about 17 for Trimble, back on their own 44. Hand off to Bryce Mathers, and he's bottled up pretty quickly right around the line of scrimmage. He is driven back, but they give his forward progress right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of a half yard. But Neil Pauly and the Dakota Mays team up on that one defensively. So maybe second down and 18. 235 to play third quarter. Trimble up 19 nothing. Again, everyone get out your 50 50 tickets. <coughs> it's for $850. If you have the ticket, 759 978. Please see Kathy in the front of the stadium. Stanley rolls to this side looking to throw. Does so. And it is caught. Caught by Austin Downs. He's brought down at the Buckeye 47. Trimble will face a third down at about eight. So Trimble gets a nice chunk back. Kilbarger comes back in on the field that time and comes up with another tackle for the Buckeyes defense. Trimble third down and about eight. Just outside the Buckeye 46. Jacob Coons at fullback, Bryce Mathers at tailback, Connor Stanley under center at quarterback, two receivers to the right, hand off to Smathers. Got some room. And he'll take it down to the Buckeye, close to the Buckeye 40. And Trimble will be facing a fourth down and short, fourth down and about one. Jay Elliott and Walker, or uh, Walker Elliott and Jay both, I think, in on that stop, actually. So they spot it right at the 41. I thought they was going to spot it inside the 41, but they spot it right at the Buckeye 41. It brings up fourth and two for Trimble. 123 to play in the third period. Trimble has scored a touchdown, and each of the Three quarters, leading 19 nothing. Cat splitting out a receiver on each side. Let's see if big Jacob Coons gets it here on this fourth and two. He, he takes the handoff, driving forward, and he's got the first down. Jacob Coons, the ball carrier. Picks up about five yards, and here's another late flag after the play. Yet another penalty after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Buckeyes. Unsportsmanlike penalty on the Buckeyes. Well, you just hate to see that time and time again if you're the Buckeye fan. You just sit here and shake your head. You know, it, what it, you know, you can't really just sit here and, and make judgment calls. You don't know exactly what's being said or done out there. But the frustration from the defense, they're playing hard, they're making some good plays, and they're just not able to stop the Tomcat offense right now. And that frustration, younger team, and this type of thing happens, but they've got to get that cleaned up. That, that can't be their mantra for the entire season. They've got to figure out a way to be able to play and keep their head in the game. Stanley takes a snap, looks this way, throws. Austin Downs pulls it in at the 17. And Jeremy Warren wraps, wraps him up and holds on as he gets help from David some Ray. other Buckeyes. David Ray on the tackle. Jeremy Warren did a nice job that time. That's Downs has been able to get free on that pretty elusively about every time he gets the ball out in the flat like that. So Jeremy did a nice job of holding on to him, like I said, until David Ray's able to get there and help out. Five yard pickup to the Buckeye 15, where it's second and five. Well, I mean, I 
Stanley takes a snap, throws out on the right side to Downs. Spins away, dives forward, and they spot it inside the Buckeye 10, about the eight. And that'll be a first and goal for Trimble. 16 seconds to play third quarter. And right there is what I was just talking about. Get that ball to Downs out in the out, out in the flat area, one on one. He has a spin move. He's got very elusive moves out there. Able to find his way for the first down again that time. And that will be the end of the third quarter here at Gloucester Stadium. Trimble leading Nelsonville York, 19 nothing. Buckeyes needing a hold here. Stanley keeps it himself on the left side. And he's in for the touchdown. Connor Stanley from about eight yards out. Well, that's a Tom third Cats lead, 25-0. Third touchdown for Connor Stanley, rushing the ball into the end zone yet again. I have an injury for the Buckeyes. Hopefully that young man will be okay. Looks like it's a cramp. So we have an injury timeout on the field. Trimble leading 25-0. Trimble will go for two. Coons in the backfield at fullback. Stanley will just toss it up in the right corner and it's pulled in by Wyatt Bragg for the two-point conversion. Nice play by Trimble on that two-point conversion. Nice toss. It's a timing route, obviously, as Stanley just drops back and hangs it up, and he puts it right in there, and Bragg pulls it in. I was going to say, he did a nice job of just, like you said, drop back, and he just threw it to a spot. He threw it to that far corner and just figured Bragg's is the taller, op or taller guy out there and has the best opportunity to get to it. So Trimble Valbury now leads 27-0. Fisher-Rosecran game, Valbury 54, Rosecran 0. Game was called for Lightning. 11.51 to play. I believe that game they mentioned over the PA, the game called by Lightning over in Zanesville. I believe they said Belpre was leading. I didn't actually catch the score. I thought score they said Belpre was leading the Rosecrans like 54 to nothing. And the game was called because of lightning. Well, the Buckeyes, uh, at this point, you're looking for an opportunity to Turn something around and end on a positive note some way, somehow out here. You're down 27-0 in the fourth quarter. They've at times been able to move the ball. At times they've defensively been able to stop the Tomcats. But here in the second half, the Tomcats seem a lot more consistent, a lot more in charge of the ball game than they did in the first half. John Stevens with a kick, backing up Warren. He takes it inside the 10. Jeremy Warren. It's a nice catch by Warren, actually. And he'll take it out to about the 20-yard line as similarly trips him up. Simmerly did a nice job of tackling him in the open field right there. It looks like Warren might be cramping up. I believe he is. Timeout on the field, 11.45 to play in the game. Trimble leading 27-0. Jeremy Warren jogs off the field, which is good to see. Again, he was just cramping up. Buckeyes first and 10 on their own 21-yard line. Adams takes a snap, looking to throw, does so, and it's caught by Alex Mount. It's actually tipped at the line, I believe, That's defensively. I'm not sure who got the hand on it, but it was actually a slight deflection at the line. Alex did a nice job adjusting to it out in the flat there and coming up with the reception. Picks up about five yards out to the 26-yard line. Second and five for the Buckeyes. It's actually the first completion for the Buckeyes and positive yardage. They had uh, one completion earlier, and it uh, was taken for a loss of about four yards, so that puts them in the positive column there. It's only the fourth time the Buckeyes have passed the ball tonight. Adams looking to throw once again. Dust over the middle. Kilbarger pulls it in, but no. It is jarred loose by Jacob Coons. Well, Cannon came across the field. He, he went up for that ball knowing he was going to get leveled sit, sitting right there in the middle of the field because he had to leave his feet to get up to the ball. And uh, Kuhn put a big hit on him. 
Third down and five for the Buckeyes on their own 26. Two receivers split out on each side. Colt Adams out of the shotgun. Looking to throw, does so. Caught by Alex Mount. He's close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. Outside the Buckeye 30. Again, it's close to a first down. We may have to have a measurement. I think that's what they're calling for. Connor Stanley gets the, nope, they're giving him the first down on it. Connor Stanley gets the stop, but Buckeyes get the first down. Connor Hammonds comes in with the Buckeye play here on first down and 10. Buckeyes on their own 31. Splitting out two receivers on each side once again. Colt Adams under center at quarterback. And a flag comes in. A legal procedure on Nelsonville York. Thought I saw some movement on the line that time. False start on the Buckeyes. I'd like to announce the triple cheerleaders at this time. Buckeyes Lugan have had Brandon, a lot of yardage David and penalties Lugan, and probably Bragland, maybe about 60 Lugan, of them in unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, I, it's Sally definitely Moore, been a, uh, Aries, a negative Sally, draw on them Riley. throughout the entire evening, Cheer no advisors, doubt about it. Shoots, They've had a hard time moving the ball and doing things without the penalties, and the penalties just really amplify the inability the to move the ball Buckeyes, effectively. Adams, First and 15 Christine for Brandon, Nelsonville York. Patton, Back on their own 26, center. Adams takes a snap, looking to run. The quarterback draw comes out of there with it. And he'll pick up about seven yards. Buckeyes will have a second and eight. Plenty of times you start seeing uh, some positive yardage and nice movement for Colton as he comes out of the backfield there. Trimble leading 27-0, 9-17 to play in the fourth quarter. Buckeyes out of the eye this time. A receiver split out wide on each side. We're in motion to this side. Adams throwing it long, and Austin Downs is going to run it down. And Kilbarger brings him down, but right before he goes down, he laterals it. To Kish. Jacob Kish will take it to midfield. It looked like Austin Downs was the receiver on that one. When he saw that ball put in the air, he started sprinting downfield and pulls it in on the interception. Tomcat defense has been very tough tonight. They have, and, and you know. The Buckeyes may get a first down, and maybe two, but that's going to be it. Yeah, and, and really in this type of a situation, they knew the Buckeyes are just going to be dropping back and trying to throw the ball. So they're watching for that. And like you said, Downs just made a good break on the ball and uh, almost looked more like the receiver on that one. Bryce Mathers on the carry for Trimble, takes it to the Buckeye 45, picks up five yards for Trimble. Dakota Mays and David Ray on the stop that time, Buckeyes defensively. Tomcats, of course, are going to come away with the win here tonight to state 25 to play and leading 27 nothing. But Buckeyes have shown some positive signs tonight. Again, Trimble loaded this year. They have all the tools. Trimble came in expecting to uh, be able to, like you said, you know, they've got the they've got the weapons. They've returned most of their starters from last year. Uh, a lot of the key starters, especially. I think it's like 18 of the 22 starters off of a team that just missed going to the semi state semifinals, just losing to Newark Catholic, and Trimble was held deep in Newark. Catholic territory right at the end of the game on a fourth and short. Well, right now you see in the Buckeyes, typically what you see at the beginning of the season, you see some mistakes, you see some just trying to feel things out, get uh, more comfortable in your positions and everything. Justice Jenkins taken down. And because of the success that the Tomcats had last year, because of the returners that they're bringing back to the field, 
this year, you are seeing a more confident and more fluid Trimble team very early in the season. No Andrews and Justin Kuhn in on the tackle for the Buckeyes that time, a, a loss for Trimble. Loss of about three, brings up second and 13 at the Buckeye 42. Tom Katz out of the eye, receiver split out on each side. Stanley keeps it himself, looking to throw. And now he's looking to run, a flag comes in. We may have a hold, caught by Justice Jenkins. And Jenkins still going, cuts it up. Jenkins will take it in, but I believe that will be called back. The flag is down, and it's probably holding on Trimble. And it is holding on the Tomcats. Play is coming back. Jenkins showing his athletic ability. He's just a sophomore for Trimble. Yeah, he's got some speed, and you know you you're going to see a lot of him over the next few years. Six fifty to play in the game, and Trimble up 27-0. Well, we're under seven minutes to play here in the ball game, and the Buckeyes defensively trying to find a way to contain this Tomcat offense. Penalty marks it back to the Trimble 44. We're at second down and about 16. They're about 26, pardon me. Stanley back to pass, throws high towards Downs, and it falls incomplete at the Buckeye 33. A flag is down. Right at the line of scrimmage, we have a legal motion on the Tomcats. Yeah, that's why Downs didn't go for that ball super aggressively because he's the one that moved right in front of the ref. And, on the Tomcats. and the flag was tossed right away. Penalty is declined. Trimble needs to get to the Buckeye 29 yard line for a first down. Ball spotted at the Tomcat 44. Typically when they're in long down situations, they've been pretty productive though. The Buckeyes declined that illegal motion penalty since the pass was incomplete. It's third and about 26 for Trimble. Stanley back to pass. Throws it back across the field to Justice Jenkins. Jenkins across midfield. And Jenkins close to the first down at the Buckeye 40. Down close to the 30. Nice play call by Trimble and nice run by Justice Jenkins. Let's see if he has the first down. He may be just shy of it. It's according to where they spot it. Looks like it's going to be fourth down and about a half yard to go. 6.05 to play. Of course, Trimble will go for it at the Buckeye 31. Hand off to Jacob Coons, and he's got the first down as he picks up about seven yards straight up the middle. Boy, he, again, did not run the ball at all in the first half. He's come out here and ran strong. I've got him for eight carries, 54 yards. And every one of those have been straight north-south running. 14, Cannon Kilbarger on the tackle. Kilbarger again on the tackle for the Buckeyes. First down and 10, Trimble. <laughs> Stanley throws out to, towards Downs, but it falls incomplete. Pass incomplete to number 10, Austin Downs. Five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter here at Gloucester Stadium. Right now I've got Connor Stanley 10 of 19 in the air for 171 yards. Tomcat second down and 10. At the Buckeye 25, Stanley throws it out to Downs. Takes it on the right side, and he's driven out of bounds. 
And a late flag comes in. Flag on the play. And those late flags haven't gone well for Nelson Bill York. No. Let's see if that's going to be a, another one on Nelson Bill York. Actually, that one right there, I they call it against the Buckeyes. Looked like uh, Bryson Nungaster had a nice play. Drove him out of bounds, and maybe they're just saying he continued to drive him too hard or too far out of bounds. I'm not sure. Personal foul on Nelson Bill York. First and goal, Trimble at the Buckeye 8. 5.22 to play. Well, now I've got him 181 yards in the air, and 123 of it has gone to downs. Hand off on the left side. Bryce Mathers, the ball Bryce Mathers carries it inside the five-yard line, down to about the three. Well, I'll tell you the truth. Connor Stanley, and we watched it last year, too. Connor Stanley does a really good job of hiding the ball. Um, when he falls back, he, he keeps his arm down. His motions with and without the ball are so similar, it's hard for a defense to be able to pick it up. The other thing is uh, most of his line is taller than him, and it's hard to see what he's doing back there from a defensive standpoint. But he does a nice job of hiding the ball and, and misdirecting things. Hand off to Smathers on the right side, and he's in for the touchdown. Four and a half minutes to play. Trimble leads 33-0. Bryce Mathers punches the ball in the uh, end zone. I've got him for somewhere in the neighborhood of nine carries and about 36 yards. See if the Tomcats will attempt the point after touchdown. John Stevens will attempt the PAT. Austin Downs will hold. Well, the Tomcats have come out and done exactly what they needed to do and what they were hoping to do. Coming out and start this season off in a position where they're trying to get themselves, as you were talking about, farther into the playoffs than they went last year. And they're, they're definitely coming out and starting the season where they wanted to. Score. Extra point is good. Trimble leads. Nelsonville, York, 34-0. Four and a half minutes to play in the game. John Stevens will kick it away for Trimble. Jeremy Warren, the deep man for the Buckeyes. Approached by Stevens. Warren will take it back at the 10 yard line, crosses the 15, the 20, 25, and takes it out to the 32 yard line. Pretty nice return by Jeremy Warren. Jake Kish on the tackle for the Tomcats. Kish on the stop that time for the Tomcats. Nice run by Jeremy. Get the ball out into some sort of uh, decent field like position. To thank all the sponsors who gave out money to the Trimble Funds for Trimble Sounds. We were able to purchase two new speakers that are now located on the pools in front of the stadium. Please okay, it's first and 10, down 34 nothing. 426 to play in the game. No Andrews at fullback, Alex Mount at tailback, Colt Adams at quarterback, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Adams looking to throw, does so towards Andrews, but a little bit high. Pass incomplete. Pass intended for six, Noah Andrews incomplete. Second down and 10 for Nelsonville York. Buckeyes out of the eye, second and 10. And draw play goes to Mount. Boy, he had nowhere to go that time. He's met right at the line of scrimmage. 74, Tanner Coon on the tackle. Tanner Coon in the stop that time for the Tomcats defensively. Loss of a yard for the Buckeyes, brings up third and 11. 
Just inside the 30 yard line of Nelsonville York. Clock at 3.54 to play in the game. Cold Adams out of the shotgun, two receivers on each side. And Adams will keep it himself. And he's taken down right around the line of scrimmage. Well, I tell you what, I believe that was a Tanner Coon in on the stop again. The Buckeyes will be punting the ball back over with 3.20 to go here in the end of the ball game. Fourth down and about 12 for the Buckeyes. Jeremy Wareham will punt it away. Austin Downs, Terry Simmerly back deep for Trimble, standing at the Tomcat 43. High snap, not bad, not a bad snap. Wareham pulls it in. Nice kick. Similarly thought about catching that one, but lets it go. Takes a trimble roll into Buckeye territory, and it's down by Eli Fox. So the Tomcats will have it at the Buckeye 48. 248 to play in the game. And the Tomcats leading 34-0. We have to say the Buckeyes did come out in the first half, Jim, and play well, played with the Tomcats, kept the game close, and here in the second half, the Tomcats have taken control as Kish is now behind center. No, number eight, I'm sorry. Andrew Losey. And that's Justice, Justice with the ball. Justice Jenkins will take it down to the Buckeye 35. And Jenkins, the ball carrier. About 14 yards, 14 and Kilbarger brings him down. On the and it looks like Cannon Kilbarger is cramping up. And maybe Justice Jenkins as well. I have not seen him pop up yet, and he looks like he's cramping up as well. Injury timeout with 2.43 to play, and the Tomcats up 34 0. And for everyone to please vacate quickly and orderly after the game has ended. Tomcats, first down and 10 at the Buckeye 35. Losey hands it off to Simmerly. Simmerly breaks it to the outside. And he's going to take it in for a triple touchdown. Simmerly. For about 35 yards out. 35 yards out. Simmerly carries the ball around that left side. Shows a little bit of speed. They just announced over the PA that a bad storm is approaching the area, and they're asking everybody to leave quickly once this game ends. Two minutes and 18 seconds left to play. So the Tomcat lead is now 40 to nothing over the Buckeyes. 2.18 to play in the fourth quarter. Boy, the second half of this ball game has just gone everything in favor of the Tomcats. Trimble led 13 nothing at half, and of course the Buckeyes still in it at that point. And but then the Tomcats just took it over and put up well, 27 second half points. They came out in the, the second half here in the third quarter. First drive in the third quarter, they changed things up a little bit, started giving the ball to the big back Coons coming out of the backfield, and they really had a strong, consistent drive down the field to put that uh, third touchdown on the board to go up 19 to nothing. And then from that point on, it just seemed like everything went their way towards the end of the third quarter and throughout the entire fourth quarter. You've got to give the Tomcats a lot of credit. Wyatt Bragg on the extra point, but it's no good. So the Tomcat lead is 40 to nothing. Two minutes, extra 18 seconds to no play. Good. Tomcats kick it away. I believe it was Tristan Conway on that kick. Jeremy Waring up in it at the 27-yard line. Simmerly in on the stop again. He's doing a nice job for special teams defensively here for the Tomcats after he just had that long touchdown run. Buckeyes first and 10 on their own 27. Colt Adams at quarterback. Noah Andrews, the lone back in the Buckeye backfield. 
And he'll take the handoff. And he'll get about pick two up yards. two or three yards out to the 30. Yeah, they give him a strong three yards on carry. Six, Noah Andrews, the ball carrier. <laughs> Clock running, 150 to play in this game. Buckeyes out of the eye. Alex Mount at tailback. Receiver on each side. Buckeyes letting the clock run down here. Minute 33 to play. Waiting for the official back judge to raise his arm, and he does so. Colt Adams. Takes a snap, hands it off to Mount. Nothing doing. Right back to the line of scrimmage. 60, John Stevens. 74, Tanner Coons on the tackle. Third down and about six for the Buckeyes. 105 to play. Buckeyes out of the eye, receiver on each side. Clock running under 50 seconds. Again, Colt just watching, waiting, eating up as much of the clock as possible. Ready for this game to be over with. Hand off to Alex Mount. And he'll take it out to about the 35-yard line, a couple yards shy of a first down. That may be the final play if neither team calls a timeout. And that will do it. Clock running at 15 seconds. Trimble's going to win this one over Nelsonville, York. 40 to nothing. All right, we're back here for the uh, wrap-up of the ball game here with the Tomcats. Take apart the Buckeyes and win 40 to zero. Again, at halftime, they were up 13-0. The Buckeyes were hanging tight, actually playing them pretty well in the first half, of holding uh, this potent offense really to 26 yards rushing and only four completed passes, even though they were for 101 yards. Uh, defensively, they were keeping themselves in the ball game and trying to find some rhythm on the offensive side of the ball. Looking at the statistics here tonight, Looking at Trimble first, Trimble carried the ball 33 times for 191 yards. They threw the ball 20 times, completing 11 of those passes for 181 yards for a total of 372 offensive yards for the Tomcats. Again, Tomcats had about 127 yards at halftime, end up with 372. Looking across the board, who had the ball and who did what with it, specifically Connor Stanley carrying the ball 12 times, 51 yards, three touchdowns on the ground, also threw for a touchdown. You had Bryce Smathers carrying the ball nine times, 36 yards and a touchdown. Jacob Kuhn did not carry the ball at all in the first half, carried the ball eight times in the second half for 54 yards. You had uh, Justice Jenkins carry the ball three times for 15 yards, and similarly carries the ball there at the end one time for 35 yards and a touchdown. Again, in the air, I mentioned Connor Stanley was 11 of 20 for 181 yards. The majority of that was done through the air to downs. Uh, Wyatt Bragg had one catch for the 33 yards, and I had Justice Jenkins had one catch for 25 yards, and then Downs had nine catches for 123 yards. So that was the... Uh, the offensive side of the ball for the Tomcats. And when you look over to the Buckeyes side of the ball, really struggled on the offensive side where the Tomcats defense was just really wreaking havoc and flying around the field on a consistent basis. The Buckeyes put the ball in the air eight times, completed three passes for a total of six positive yards in the air. On the ground, they carried the ball 31 times for 99 yards. You had TJ Warren carry the ball twice for six yards. Had uh, Oh, lost who I was looking at there. Jeremy Warren carried the ball twice for a yard. Had Colton Adams carry the ball four times for about 25 yards. Noah Andrews five times for about 12 positive yards. He did most of the blocking throughout the night for Alex Mount. Alex Mount carried the ball 17 times for about 55 yards. So again, the Buckeyes 
go down to the Tomcats here 40 to zero. And the Buckeyes got a lot of things to work on. One of the things that I think they can find a way to eliminate quickly is the penalties after the play. You know, they had, uh, I, again, I'm not sure, like you mentioned, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 yards probably in penalties. There's probably more than that because yeah, I think easily. we had another personal foul after I mentioned that. Yes. Yeah, things uh, they got. There was a lot of frustration on that side of the ball for the Buckeyes, and it showed throughout the night. Tomcats, like I said, the Buckeyes played very well with them in the first half. Buckeyes are young. They've got a long, long way to go, but I think you saw a lot of good, positive things out of that team. A lot of these kids have a lot of heart, and we're working hard. They're going to continue to evolve and become better as a team, and you're going to see a lot of growth, but there's a lot of young uh, talent out there, and uh, it's going to be a tough season for the Buckeyes. They're going to be looking to find ways to manufacture more yardage and uh, keeping the games longer and find themselves in a position like they did in the first half of shutting down a team. Again, Tomcats only had 26 yards on the ground in the first half, only had four completed passes. Buckeyes defense did an excellent job in that first half, and they just weren't able to sustain it for the entire, for the entire evening. Next week, Nelsonville York will play one week from tonight, again on Saturday night. Buckeyes will travel to play Newark Catholic at Newark Catholic. And the Trumbull Tomcats will play at Wahama again. That's, a, of course, a league game. Wahama defeating Trimble. I know they did last year, and I think maybe the last two years, and that's yes. what the hockey division came down to was that one game. And it's probably going to be the same way this year. The winner of that game is probably going to take the hockey division. Yeah, they've got two of their biggest games to start the season out. They've got one of them behind them now beating the rival Buckeyes. And, you know, part of a rivalry is the fact that there is never for sure who's going to win year in and year out. And over the now, over the past 10 years, the Buckeyes have won five games and the Tomcats have won five in the past 10 years. So that definitely rings true as a, a true rivalry of sorts. And now, like you said, they move next to Wahama. And that's become their new TVC hawking rival. And uh, they're looking to be able to find a way to punch the ball in the end zone and come away with a win against Wahama and then move on to the rest of the season. Once again, the final score here tonight in the season opener for the Tomcats and Buckeyes here at Gloucester Stadium. The Trimble Tomcats defeat the Nelsonville York Buckeyes 40-0. to zero. For Justin McCumber on camera and Ray Spouts, this is Jim McCumber saying so long, everybody. Well, this is Nelsonville TV Cable Channel 15. We're here because we care. We're at Guy Academy High School Memorial Field. I'm Fred Gibson, my partner Les Champlin, Officer Rick Crossan on the camera. The Bulldogs coach are getting ready to form on the far side of the field to come on for their first game of the year. It's always nice to watch them come onto the field for the first time of the year. And you know what? We enjoy it every other time they come on the field as well. But 2013, here come the dogs. Something tells me we're going to be standing up tonight. We may be standing up. This uh, we had a very, very nice crowd that followed us down here tonight. I thought there would be more people on the Galapagos side because they have a very fine team. Made it to the playoffs last year. Lost to the same team that we lost to. So uh, it's one of those kind of deals where you think they're all going to show up. But if you look up on the hillside, if Rick can get it up there, Everybody that has a house around here seems to have a back porch or some sort of a deck where Large. they didn't pay to get in. <laughs> Large decks. <laughs> and there's uh, deck parties all around us. Probably some liquid refreshments being partaken in up there. The Bulldogs come in with a lot of returning, well, we want to call them skilled players. Absolutely. And, and they've had to replace some people in the trenches. Quarterback coming back, Joey Burrow, big year last year. Talked to Coach Adams before the game tonight. You know, he's in, got a script together, going to try and come out and see what he can do against people. And uh, he's excited about the game. And I know that uh, he says the kids are fired up and ready to play. And He's got 
You've got Trey Williams, his tailback, he's back. He's got both of his wide receivers back. They've had to replace the two slot people, but uh, Skyler and Josh Mack, Skyler Schwartzel and Josh McIntosh will be hard to replace, but we've got some speed to try to replace them. Well, it's Friday night excitement, and it's all here, ready to go. Starting about a minute and 20 seconds from now. A lot of teams are, what, Trimble and Nelsonville York are going tomorrow night. Uh, Alexander went against Federal Hawking last night, but like you said, there is nothing like Friday night. Friday night football is uh, something special. It's just hard to believe it's here already. Yep, the summer went fast, and I guess it does.